Hello and welcome to this video tutorial series, Getting Started with Glueware. If you're taking the test drive, you'll be able to follow along with the instance set up for you. If you're interested in taking the test drive, go to glueware.com slash test dash drive and complete the request. In this video, we're going to highlight the dashboard app. The dashboard app is part of the core Glueware control software, so it doesn't require any additional licensing and it provides visualization of the underlying data using various drag and drop widgets. It's also tightly integrated with the app suite to provide greater efficiency via click through navigation. So let's sign into my Gluer instance and get started. So here I've signed into my Gluer instance, which happens to be on our demo system, demo.gluer.com. One thing you're going to want to verify is you're in the right organization. If you're in a test drive, you'll be assigned into a given org. If you're using a system with multiple tenants like I have here, I'm using test drive pod one and I can see my, my proper user credential that I'm signed in with here. So now I've been navigated back into the last app I was in, which happens to be config drift and audit. And I've covered this a, a little bit in the previous examples with drift and audit where you know you have your device explorer and you have various ways to search and sort the data but you have limited ways in which to really visualize the data and that's where dashboard comes in so let's navigate into the dashboard app using the left hand nav menu so i'll navigate here and again if this menu looks slightly different than the one you're seeing it is because it does support drag and drop so you just you have to have to find and locate dashboard since um, I tend to use dashboard on the top it is uh, the first option here you can navigate into the dashboard app or directly into the running dashboard or the dashboard library and I'll be explaining these two components but let's go ahead and navigate into the dashboard app so here we are in the dashboard app and this tutorial is going to be broken down into three parts part one we're going to go through an overview of the app and explain the basics of the framework and how to navigate it and, and really the, the core capabilities of how it works. In part two, we're going to take a look at example dashboards and you can leverage what we have already built for you and do things like clone and, and copy those and build, build them into your own. In part three, we're going to be focused on that third part, which is the building and the customization of your own dashboards. So here we are navigated into the dashboard library and let's just cover a few of the basics here. When I'm looking at this view here, I have dashboards in my view. If you don't have any dashboards in your view, that's because you may be in a, a system or an org that is newly configured. There are a few different ways to get dashboards into your org. When Dashboards was first released with Glueware 4.0, we did precede uh, four dashboards in. Now in 4.1, we added the ability to import and export dashboards. So those are not preceded now. You would go ahead and import them. Generally, when you're working with our customer service team and they're getting your initial installation set up, generally they're going to go ahead and install those for you. But I do want to bring out a point, which is, when you build a new dashboard, and I'm gonna just I'm gonna do this for this example. I'm gonna and this is really covered in the in the third part here, but I'm gonna create a new dashboard. I'll just call it test and I'll say next. And uh, this is just regarding the image, so I'll click next. I want to talk about permission settings and that you can create dashboards as private where only you are going to see your dashboard in your instance with your whatever org you've created it in with your credential. You have another option for public. If you make the dashboard public, then others in your org will see it. Another interesting option here is to tick this box to say make this dashboard also available in child orgs. Glueware is set up in a hierarchical manner where you can have parent and childs to the actual organization. This is done so that certain data and content can cascade down from the parent to the child relationship. So if I cancel out of this, what I'm gonna see here is that if I look at this dashboard up here, it's a My Inventory dashboard. It was created by a user logged in as admin, and it was created in the Glueware system org. 
So by default, when Glueware is set up, there is a Glueware system org. You're, once you have other orgs set up, you're welcome to delete that, but it, it is a fundamental component of like the initial org that's in the system. This particular instance and install had that, and when our dashboards were first added, we added dashboards to the Glueware system org, and we enabled the ability for them to cascade down. So all the other orgs are going to get whatever dashboards are installed here. So that's just one thing to point out in that sometimes, you know, now with import and export, it's easier to just get the dashboards you want into a given org. But a lot of times when you're creating child orgs, you want the certain capabilities and content to just cascade down. So that's there. So let's talk about one other topic here, which is when I'm looking at my dashboard library, I have two categories. I have favorite dashboards and other dashboards. When I create a dashboard, let's say I created this one right here, you always have the option via the, uh, the dashboard options here to add to favorites. As soon as a dashboard is in your favorites list, it appears up here. And then the, the only probably real importance of that is around dashboard navigation. So when I open a dashboard, I can just click into a dashboard and, and it's gonna open up and I can navigate back to my library view. So sometimes you're just clicking in, you're looking at the dashboards, you know you, the one you wanna see, you click it and you open it up. Now, back in my library view, because I have these four in my favorites, when I navigate into my this first dashboard here, I have shortcut keys that allow me to switch the dashboard. So in my case, I have alt arrow keys set up. I can hold down alt and hit the arrow key and navigate through, kind of page through my dashboard. So what I'm doing here is holding down my alt key and hitting the arrow, and it allows me to navigate through the dashboards. Those shortcut keys are set up through your user profile. You just click on your user profile in the upper right. You say, edit my profile. In the My Profile dialog, there's a section for dashboards. So we'll cover these quickly. One is that we have the light and the dark theme. As you can see with my current UI, it's in the dark theme. So that's why you see it in that way. I could switch it to light. And then obviously the, the background of the UI would be a, a light gray versus a, a dark, dark gray black kind of combination. The rotation delay, if I had it turned on, then when I'm on a dashboard, once the rotation delay uh, expires or, or times, it will rotate to the next dashboard. So the reason you may have this here is some customers have an operational user, they sign into Glueware, then they bring up the dashboards and they have it rotate like every 30 seconds. And then they put the dashboard in a full screen mode and basically just use it as a high level ops monitor view. Since I don't have a dedicated view dedicated to the dashboards, I don't leave that on and I don't leave that on an auto rotate, but that's why that's there. The next thing you'll see here is the keyboard shortcuts. So that's what I was just talking about. I have enabled to have alt, if I hold down the alt key and hit left or right arrow, I'll navigate between my favorite dashboards. Another option is to enable Alt and then one through nine to open up a specific dashboard. So I don't tend to use that one. I tend to either just go to the library and open up the one I want or use the alt arrow keys to kind of page through them. Uh, the other option you have here is what you're gonna see as we get deeper into the dashboards and the widgets, widgets provide navigation into the apps. So if there's a count view or a filtered view, I can click on that and if it's filtering my device view from device manager, if I click on it, it will navigate me into the device manager view. Enabling this option would keep the dashboard in one tab. It would open my solution in another tab. And that can be fairly powerful because you can be doing multiple things at once with Glueware. You may want to keep, keep dashboard in a given tab and have another app like Config Drift and Audit in another separate tab where you're doing some work. It's really a user preference there, but that kind of covers these preferences here. Let's just uh, navigate. I'm not going to change any settings here. 
I'll just navigate back into my dashboard library. So we've talked about the favorites and the other, and uh, the other component I want to mention is that when you're in this view, as I mentioned, you can just click on any dashboard, or you can click on go to the running dashboard. When you go to the running dashboard, it's going to take you to generally the dashboard that's on the top of your favorites or where you left off. So basically, if I go into the running dashboard, it's going to open up my inventory. And then once I'm in a dashboard, you have these options on the top here. I can go full screen. I can look at info about this dashboard or I can return back to my library. So you have two ways to navigate back into that library. One is through this icon here. The other is through your left hand nav menu. Really, it's, a, it's the same thing, really just user preference on how you get back. So the next, the next icon or option here is to create a new dashboard. We're going, I just did show you the beginning of that dialog, but we'll be showing that in detail coming up in part three. Next, I want to cover import and export. Let's cover export first. When you select export dashboard, one of the nice features built in is that you have the ability to multi-select. So I can select as many dashboards as I want to. I can select these four and select export. And Glueware is going to create a JSON file that has all of those dashboards in. And then when I do an import and I import that JSON file, all of those dashboards will import into my instance. So I, I wouldn't, in this example here, I wouldn't import these back in, but just showing that all you do is hit the import dashboard. You can drag and drop the JSON file onto here, our, our dashboard template, pre-built dashboard, and click import and it saves it. That being said, I want to touch on one other component of import, which is if you go to support.gluware.com, if you're a Glueware customer, log in with your credentials and you go to the Glueware provided examples. I covered this a little bit in the audit tutorial where there's example audits. There are also example dashboards. So if you are in a Glueware instance and you don't have any examples, you can come here, log in. You can navigate into any of these four examples and we are going to be adding to these examples. Here is the welcome to the Glueware dashboard. I can download this JSON file and then when I perform an import, just drag and drop this JSON into my instance. And that's how I would import this into my uh, dashboard library. So that covers really the options across the top. The last component here on the, the top bar is around filtering. And you can see that, you know, I just have five dashboards here. But if I was using Glue for a long time and I was creating various dashboards and I had some test ones and some private ones and some you know, things I used every day. I, I may want to be able to quickly find a dashboard in as this library gets bigger. So there is a filter option. So you can search by a name, you can search by tags. Tags are uh, auto tagged currently. They are based on the widget types that are in the dashboard. You could search by permission, you could search, search by shared, and then you could reset the filters and you can apply the filters. So just to want to bring that out as your system is scaling and you're getting to more and more dashboards and you're like, oh, I know I created one called operations. I could hit filter and I could search for, you know, by name and I, I would find it. So that's um, that's the filter option. So let's get into part two here, which are the example audits. And what I want to highlight for you is that the example audits are, are good for a couple purposes. One is that you get something on a functional right away and you don't have to go and create it yourself. But two is that it gives you examples to build off of. So if you see something you like in an example, you can clone that dashboard and make it your own. Let's jump into these a little bit. What I want to first highlight is this Welcome to Glueware 5 dashboard. So I'm going to click on it and open it. And this is kind of a unique dashboard in that when you open it, what it looks like and what it is, is one widget. And inside the widget, although it kind of looks like a widget, is a web page. So just to highlight what this is, is Glueware wanted the ability to be able to push content into a dashboard. And one of the ways in which we can do that is through a web page. One of the widgets you have available as you build web pages is a, a 
widget that just literally loads in a web page. The only caveat I want to point out is that the widget does not support iframes, so it has to be a web page that does not have iframes turned on. But this particular widget, and I'll show you the URL, is pulling in a web page. And in this web page, it has a lot of information that is helpful when you're using Glueware. Featured content, what's new with Glueware, news. And one of the things I wanted to point out that if you may not have bookmarked or you may not you know, no, navigate our, our web page often, very quick links to tutorials, documentation, support, the, the support and knowledge base, solution briefs. I, I frequently recommend new users keep this dashboard in their dashboard library. And then when they're looking for new content from Glueware or looking for help, it, they can kind of quickly come here. And then what I would point out is, let's say you're bringing up our tutorials. I typically would right click and say open in a new tab because you don't want to navigate away from your Glueware instance. You just want to get to the tutorial. So just the tip there is that anytime you're opening a new page from a web page widget is to just you know do a right click and open it in a new tab. And that will uh, kind of be effective for you. So let's take a look at this dashboard in, in itself. And so if I if I look on configure, if I bring up the configuration of a widget, this so I'm I'm configuring the dashboard itself. Now I'm going to go into configure the widget. This particular widget, and again we're going to cover this more into part three, which is welcome to Glueware Five. It's refreshing every five minutes and it's pulling in this source URL. You could copy this URL, and if you want it outside of the Glueware app, you could just go to any web browser, put in glueware.com slash dashboard dash feed, slash dashboard dash feed, and you will pull up this dashboard, the, the dashboard feed content in just a web browser. We've just framed it into a dashboard to make it easier to, let's say, push new content or make users aware of new things that have come out from Glueware because a lot of times our regular users are using our apps but they're not necessarily looking at Glueware.com or keeping up with all, all of the various marketing and releases. Again, this is just a little bit of an example of the Welcome to Glueware 5 dashboard that is a single widget pulling in a web page. And I'll just hit cancel here and cancel here, cancel out of my editing of it and let's go back to my library. The next example dashboard I want to show you is called Glueware Example Dashboard, and I'm gonna click into this one. This one, I often, when I'm training users or, or talking to users about the flexibility of the dashboard, I like to talk about this one as really more the administrative view, more of maybe a lab manager or maybe the person who's facilitating your updating of Glueware, and that this has a number of widgets. One is called the user activity, so I'm on the system now, so I'm showing that. But I can scroll through and see, you know, what users were on the system, and what they were in, and you know, what app they're in, and what org they're in. So you have administrative view of users on the system. So if I was going to upgrade the system or you know do something that might be disruptive, I could contact the users and let them know, hey, we're up updating Glueware, or hey, we're doing something, and, and it may be disruptive. So that's very useful. This is a generic count widget. We're just, you have the ability to determine what you're displaying the count of. There's nine devices in this org, so that's what I'm seeing here. This update and status widget is really useful. It's really just a, a bulletin, and it's just text. But the nice thing is, is it is rich text. I have bold, I could import images. You can do actually quite a bit with it. In this example, we're just using it as a basic log to show when the system was updated and to what version. This next widget over here is kind of a cool one where it again is really just pulling in a web page, but this example has been renamed to be a security threat and it is just pointing to a very specific component Fortinet makes available, which is just the visualization of threats. And so it's just kind of interesting something you know, interesting visually to put on a dashboard if you're leaving the dashboard up and, and putting it up. Some people pull in weather maps or other things that may affect operational considerations. The getting started with here, this widget here is again, just rich text. So it's linking to knowledge based tutorial documentation. The latest from Glueware widget is an RSS feed. So this is pulling live and it is the ability to kind of see some of the latest from Glueware. 
and then this last widget on this page is account so you can see the way this this particular page has been built there's four widgets across and three widgets on the bottom this third widget has been scaled to fit kind of like two. This might give you ideas of how you may want to build your own dashboards, or you may want to take this and customize it. So let's jump back to the library and go through just a couple more quick examples just to just show you a few more options. So let's go into My Inventory. My Inventory is really built to be a, a visualization of your device manager or your device explorer and that I have a, again, I see the same widget I had in my other example. It's just a count of devices. This one gets a little bit more interesting in that I'm not just, I'm not just providing a count, but I'm providing a status. Uh, and it happens to be show me the count of my devices by their discovery status. So if I had, to, if I had devices that were undiscoverable, that would uh, maybe I would want to draw my attention to I could click in and see that and while we're on that topic I, I do want to point out that these are clickable like for example you can see when I highlight on this nine discovered devices it becomes a pointer I'm going to just click in and it is taking me to device manager so if you remember that option I had an option to open a new tab I didn't have that option ticked so instead of opening a new tab, it took me straight from that widget into Device Manager. Here I am in Device Manager, but I want to point out that the filter has been auto-configured and it is discovery status, is discover status is uh, discovered. So I'm just going to, you know, I can reset that if I apply. I'll clear the filter. In my case here, it's just a small uh, lab example, so all nine devices are up and discoverable. But this is where you can create filters in your widgets to display the information you want to see. So let's navigate back into the dashboard library. I could have actually gone to the running dashboard since that, that should still be running. Let's go back into um, my inventory. And so next is this is a widget by device type. So I have a breakdown, Glueware categorizes your devices in terms of is it a router, a switch, a, a data center switch, a campus switch, firewall, a load balancer. So you can see a breakdown and then you get the float over counts as to kind of interact with the widget. Next is a breakdown by OS version. This is another interesting one that you might want to leverage a widget like this in your OS management dashboard to show you what versions you have. This is important, especially if you have an ongoing project where you're trying to standardize on your operating system versions. Next is I have a, a widget called device activity, and this is presented in a grid. So this grid here is customizable as you're building it. Or let's say you, you're looking at this and you like the My Inventory dashboard, but you don't like the columns selected here. And again, you can scroll to the right but let's say the most important things weren't in the view. You could clone this dashboard, customize the columns, and then create your own and, and move on from there. So this is again why you know, loading up the Glueware provided example dashboards can be very helpful because they can give you ideas to then customize and create your own. Next, as I scroll over the currently scheduled activities, there's I can see that there's four different activities scheduled, one of each of these categories and then into the far right here I see upcoming activities so this is a widget that is a schedule of upcoming activities it, it is currently on the daily view I could switch it to the weekly view or monthly view and that will the widget will update with uh, that that particular data so here's the weekly view so let's move on into the next dashboard here and we'll take a look at the OS management dashboard example and again OS management is an app that you use to automate changing the software versions on your devices so you build plans and you execute those plans and so here I can see again a widget a breakdown of my operating system versions I next have my plans and if there were any successes or fails so I have the counts there I have a pie chart view here of my OS plan status that three sit in draft and 11 have been completed I can look at my, again, here's my schedule pulled in with a monthly view. I can pull in my file server status. If I had multiple file servers, I could see them all. 
and I can see if there's any incomplete file syncs that have um, executed or not. So again, just you know, surfacing the data that you don't necessarily get in the app from like a one page summary view. And that's why usually the dashboards are very useful when you come in the morning or you know you come off a break and you hit the dashboard and you see your overall status and then you navigate deeper into the app to complete the work that you're working on. So back to library here, we'll hit this last one here that's built around audit and drift. You might be noticing a pattern here where you have you know many of the same widgets repeated but in some cases with different perspectives. So this is another count widget but I'm counting my audits that had violations. So two out of my six audit policies had violations. I can see here the audits, the number of the audit policies, the number of devices and any errors or any summary information. Of the audits in my system, I can see two have completed, four have not run yet, so they're sitting in unknown. When I look at my overall drift status, none have changed, so there are no there are no devices to list here. And I can see if I have any scheduled activity coming up regards to drift or audit. So that really completes, let's say, part two, which is really summarized around using the example dashboards, being able to go to and or navigate into the support.gluer.com, grab the examples, get them in your system, leverage them, and then also have start to have the ability to make them your own. So here in part three, what we're gonna talk about is being able to clone an existing dashboard and make it your own. And we're gonna look at building dashboards from scratch and what you can do with that. So let's start by navigating back to my dashboard and let's go back to the Glueware example dashboard. Let's say I like, or I like this example dashboard a lot, but there are things I wanted to change. So I just click on the arrows here, uh, the, the options here. So I can view additional info, I can configure it, I can clone it, I can export it, I can remove it from favorites or delete it. So what we wanna do here is clone. And hit save. So now I have a new dashboard and because I, I cloned one that was in my favorites, it's sitting in my favorites. Again, so let's just say that I'm not, I'm st it's still kind of a work in progress so I can, I can remove it from favorites. By removing it from favorites, it's just gonna push it down into the other dashboard view. And I can see here it's created by me and it's created in the test drive pod one org. It retains its properties that uh, the, the original one was created with from a per permissions standpoint. So let's go ahead and configure this dashboard. So now we've kind of left the original one intact but now we're gonna come in here and edit. So let's say I like user activity, I like count. So here in this update and status widget, let's say that this information is now out of date and I wanna update some information in this widget. I would click on the view more information and go into configure. And so here I have a rich text editor where I could just say, you know, glueware system updated I'm not following the, you can edit it any way you want. This is just for demo purposes, but I could say, you know, like, you know, 5.0.75 or something like that. And then I could put a date and time in here and hit save. So I have a rich text editor that I could add pictures in, a grid in, lines. You really have all of this to work with. You can put in hyperlinks and hit save. And so now you've updated, you know, that widget. And let's say that, while this was nice eye candy, you know, you don't like this, you could just click on this and say delete, right? And so just, you know, many options that you have of you go in and you configure a widget or you can delete it or remove it. And let's say I want to that now, I'm gonna, I wanna move this one here and I wanna add a widget. So add widget is the key component where you're going to have a view of all the widgets that are available, the widget types. And then you can just drag and drop these in. So let's say from my main um, demo clone here, I wanna add in the widget that says total Cisco devices. So I just grab it, I drag it over, and I drop it. And I can see that 
eight of my nine devices are Cisco. And so let, let's close out the widget menu here for a minute. And let's just see how this widget is built. If I look at the view more info and I hit configure, this is a count widget. So it is a basic count widget, but a filter has been applied to it. So let's click on the filter. This is the vendor equals Cisco. So if I have wanted another count of vendor equals Juniper or vendor equals Arista, I could build that and filter the data and create a widget for that specific view. So you can add additional rules, you can add groups, you can do ands and ors. You can really get quite complicated in terms of processing the underlying data and then presenting it in a widget. So I hit apply and hit save. So now in this view, I have you know my total device count and I have my total Cisco device count. If I'm happy with this, I just I can publish it. But let's take other, a couple other quick options. We just looked at add widget. We could set it to favorites. That's uh, an option here. You can also do it from the library. You have your permission settings. So again, public or private and make this dashboard available in, in child orgs. I'll just keep this private and hit save. I can reset. If I hit reset, it's going to clear everything out of this dashboard. So you want to be a little careful with reset. I think it does prompt you to confirm that's what you want to do. But let's let's say you were building and you did some drag and drop and, and a little bit of editing, but you, you really weren't happy with it and you want to start from scratch, you can just hit reset. But let's say I am happy with these edits. I just hit publish. I get a message saying that it was successful. I'm back at my library view here. And now I have my demo clone. If I just click on it, I open up the dashboard. So let's go back to the library and complete the last step here, which is really building from scratch. So I'm, I'm in my view here. I want to create a new dashboard and I'll just call it new, new video demo. You can give it a description, hit next. This is the image that gets pulled in. We put a placeholder image in. It's called our default image. You can use that uh, or none, or you can import a custom image. Let's just stick with the, the Glueware logo here and hit next. Again, this is around, can only I see it? Can all users in my org see it? And if additional orgs are created from this org, do I want this dashboard I'm creating to become available and cascade down into that next org. So this is really, you know, from an administrative view, they'll probably give you some guidelines as to, you know, what you're doing here and really org dependent on how, how much control they put on dashboards and what standard dashboards they want available in given instances. So let's just keep this one as private and hit next. So now I'm sitting here with a completely blank page and I get a little message saying just drag and drop widgets from my side panel. So let's just start taking a look at what we can build here. Some of them already are kind of drag and drop and don't require really much configuration. Other widgets will require configuration. So let's take an example. Bulletin, if I drag and drop this in, is blank. Bulletin is your rich text editor, so I, I could come in here, hit configure, and say, I could leave some message and I can make this anything. I could put support data, I could put hours, I could company information. You can make this anything you want it to be. So it's a bulletin. Now let's drop in count. You've seen count on numerous examples, but count has to be configured. So I can say configure, and you're gonna probably wanna rename you know, count. So I'll, I'll say total, total device count. Choose my data set. It's coming from my devices. I wanna count it. So now I can add a filter. From my devices, do I wanna filter on anything specific? It's config date, it, it, it's discover status, anything right so if i if i don't put any filter on it at all it will be my total device count so i, I can just say you know delete apply 
reset. I'll just close out my filter here and hit save. So now it's pulling in my nine devices. But just as an example again, if I come in here and hit configure and I, I apply a filter, which is vendor equals, we'll make it Juniper this time, and hit apply total Juniper device count and hit save. Now I have one Juniper in this org, so that's what I have here. Numerous uh, widgets will require configuration, activity, and, and others. Uh, others are like RSS feed, if I drag and drop this in. This one requires configuration, but if I look at this particular one, which is the latest from Glueware, this is also an RSS feed, but the difference is, is that we've pre-configured it and saved it as a preceded widget. So if I click on more info, info and I go to configure, you can see the Glueware RSS feed URL here. So hit cancel. So if you had your own company RSS feed and you want to put it here, you could do that. Next is... Um, I, I will just pull this one. Let's let's go ahead and pull user activity in. Again, I feel like this one is a, a very good one for administrative view. And let's just say that I wanted to see as many users as I could in one view. So you have the ability to resize these widgets. So I just made this one like double tall. Um, you could, and, and these pages are not limited to like above the fold. If I wanted to add now a grid, I could drag and drop it down here. And now my page view, I gotta close out of my widget view to see, or I could just see it from here. Oh, here, so I scroll down here. Now I can have a grid that is from my device manager. Let me select and order columns. Previously I showed you a grid and I said you could determine what columns are shown. So let's say I wanted type, then vendor, then name, then IP address, and then I wanted, let's say discovery status, discovered by, discovered on, discovery status. So this is where you can add in any of these columns and put them in the order you want and hit apply and hit, I'll call it, you know, and all of these devices have been discovered. So this is, you know, again, the way to drag and drop and build and make these dashboards your own, make these available to your users or yourself for administrative purposes or ways in which are gonna help improve your efficiency when working with the underlying app suite like Device Manager, Drift and Audit, OS Manager, and others. So this concludes the dashboard tutorial. I'd like to thank you for your time and hopefully you're able to follow along with the test drive and practice building some of these dashboards. Thanks again.